good morning and good afternoon from india dr mohan uh, mohan khare president of indian light ray association and director knowledge resource center santgad baba amravati university miss helen mendel acting general secretary general isla mr winston roberts chair of the asia oceana regional division committee of ifla and vice chair of ifla's regional council dr dv singh professor and librarian srm university india and ex president of ila mr arshad mohammad director pakistan library club mohammad jamaluddin chief bibliographer deputy librarian of national library bangladesh dr premila gamage consultant and knowledge management system and librarian and vaiti research colombo reshma dongal librarian sar secretariat shonom yagden national library of bhutan dr owen chobe general secretary greetings great good afternoon from india on behalf of indian library association and ifla rdc asia oceana i am proud and privileged to welcome you all it gives us immense pleasure to have you and i sincerely thank all of you for accepting our invitation to be present here and agreeing to give us give this talk thank you very much i welcome all of you warmly with great pleasure i also wish to acknowledge the support from dr dilara begum mohammad mamun of bangladesh dr premila of sri lanka and owen chobe and mohan khadge of indian library association for organizing this event i also welcome all the participants who are connected through the zoom the webinar will be focused on the best practices of south asian libraries and librarians in their support of the un sdgs through this program the indian library association and ifla regional division committee for asia oceana aim to inspire and encourage colleagues within the region to advance their efforts to bring the un sdgs to fruition i am sure the participant would enjoy the event and topics of the discussion and will end up with lots of thoughts ideas intellect and satisfaction and will inspire the encourage south asian librarians to explore creative ideas that support the un sdgs once again i would i would like to thank all of you and welcome you to this event may i now invite uh, dr mohan khade for his welcome address and opening remarks dr mohan khade is president of indian library association and president of maharashtra university and college library and association dr khade is working as director knowledge resource center at sat gaj baba amravati university since 2008 previously he was college librarian for 19 years he was also course coordinator for lis bilivsc and master degree and mphil courses of jashobant rao chaban maharashtra open university he has his credit two books as authors three edited books 25 research articles in journals 24 conference papers 16 invited talk and seven phd under his guidance dr mohan khadge please dr mohan khare dr mohan khare are you connecting
I hope she couldn't connect, he couldn't connect. So I think we, uh, we can call him later. Uh, now, shall I go for next? May I now invite Helen and Mandel, IFLA Acting General Secretary for opening remarks. Helen Mandel is currently an Acting General Secretary of IFLA. Helen's uh, background is an university libraries in Australia, working across areas, including information literacy, library planning, digital repositories, and scholarly uh, research. Before joining IFLA, Helen worked for some years in Tanzania as a school library manager and in Namania as a library advisor and coach to its community libraries. Helen is a passionate believer in the role of library association and was heavily involved in association and positions in Australia. She brings her understanding of real world li library issues and association operations to her position at IFLA. The SDGs represent an ideal framework to engage with the stakeholders. May I invite Helen Mandley, please, for her opening remarks. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Carr. And welcome to everyone who is here at this webinar this, today. For me, it's early morning and I bring you greetings from The Hague in the Netherlands. And it's a very cold morning and still dark, so the sun is yet to rise. But I thank the Indian Library Association and the South, Af South Asia Working Group of IFLA's Regional Division uh, Committee for Asia Oceania for planning and delivering this webinar. I think choosing this format of a webinar is really valuable because it allows this important information and work around the SDGs to be spread widely through your region. And I can see already that there are a large number of participants. Um, when I first heard about the SDGs, I was really excited. Um, I like the format and the colors of the SDGs. Every time I look at them, they, they are um, interesting to me and I want to know more. But above that, they're a framework. And what I was interested to hear about was this framework for development, a framework that countries sign up for. That is, they put their, their, their name and their signature to the United Nations to say that they're going to do something. And therefore then they're committed to do something. The, the SDGs have to include information. There's no SDG, whether it's climate um, change or around education or around agriculture that can function well without information. And so to have this presented to the world gives libraries an in. It's an entry point for talking to governments it's an entry point for libraries to show their work as assets and to push the skills and benefits that we can bring as partners to government, not as people going there to plead for more funding, but to say, this is what we can bring to the table. And to remember that the sustainable development goals or um, are around 2030. So these are the goals for 2030 and it's now only 2022 and we have a long way to go. So if you're not involved in them yet, there's still plenty of time. You'll hear today about how to get engaged with your national authorities. And these are the groups responsible for what we call voluntary national reviews where countries put their hand up and say, 
we will be doing something on the SDGs and we would like to present this to the United Nations. And each year countries go to New York, to the United Nations to show what they're doing. And IFLA's role is also to go to New York in that week and to hold events where we show what libraries are doing. And we take a, a small team of people who can give real examples of how libraries as partners are affecting uh, communities. The other thing you'll hear today is examples of the SDGs in action. So what I mean there is where libraries and librarians are making a real impact on individuals, on families and on communities. We've tried to capture over the last few years these stories of impact in the library map of the world. This is a website um, which has a section on sustainable development goals and stories. And we have stories from India and from Sri Lanka about services and activities that uh, libraries are doing. And the stories that they have in that library map of the world are very powerful ones. But I just want to say they don't come easy. You can't just say, oh, let's have a session and people, you know, have, have heard about the SDGs. That's not really making an, an impact in their lives. But where librarians have thought deeply about their communities, have thought about the needs that they have, and even unexpressed needs, have developed a range of services that meet those needs and then implemented and uh, delivered those services and then evaluated what impact have they made on the lives of those people. They become incredibly uh, powerful and really things that show others the difference that libraries can make. And this can be a challenging journey for people, but it's immensely fulfilling. So I hope as you listen today that you hear examples, as Dr. Carr mentioned, that you think, I could do that. I'd be interested in something like that. I could get in touch with this person and learn more. And that you come away with a range of um, ideas, but also enthusiasm to really become engaged and be a change agent in your community. So I look forward to hearing more myself, but please enjoy this webinar and thank you for the opportunity to have a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ellen, for your nice opening remarks and the remarks on um, activities on SDGs. Um, may I now uh, wish to invite uh, uh, Dadaji Mohan, uh, Dr. Mohan Kheri has joined. So, okay. uh, it's fine. And so now, may I invite uh, Mohan Khadge for his welcome address and opening remarks. Mohan Khadge is the president of Indian Library Association and president of Maharashtra University um, uh, uh, College and Librarians and details I already told. May I invite Mohan Khadge, please? Thank you. Uh, sorry, because of uh, an in in-date connectivity, I could not join. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome you all to the webinar joint organized by Indian Library Association and IFLA Regional Division Committee, South Asia Working Group, on the South Asia Libraries and United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. During this webinar, in next two hours, the invited speakers from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, and Bhutan will put their expert views before you all on two themes 
that is libraries engagement with national authorities and community engagement through library programs friends as you know all that united nation had formulated millennium development goals these eight goals were formulated it was a long term planning to implement it during 2000-2015 and in health and education we did satisfactory results but in other cases we could not achieve what we are expected further in the month of september 2015 united nation proposed 17 sustainable development goals and 116 targets in the meeting held at new york in this 17 sustainable development goal we know that end of poverty gender equality economic development innovation and infrastructure peace justice and strong institution and so on now from various sectors we all are trying to contribute something to achieve these goals every sector people in every sector trying to achieve these goals achieve these goals set by united nation and our library and library professionals should not be exception to it it is true while contributing in achieving this goal we have to do better more than what we are doing in our routine work sometime we have to work jointly with other organizations institutions and professional bodies by providing right information to right user at right time we can achieve this goal making our users our stakeholders literate in terms of information we can do we can contribute in that direction also more or work through or contributing in lifelong learning we can achieve we can try to achieve these goals at present many libraries from south asia contributing at their level best and engage at various activities concerned with sustainable development goals our speakers our today today speaker invited speakers will highlight on these activities and definitely put their views put their experience while contributing such kind of such a goal so i will not take much time and i thank thank you for organizer for giving me opportunity to put my views before you thank you thank you very much and once again i'm sorry i'm uh, joined late here thank you thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh, dr mohan khade and for your nice uh, opening remarks and it's it's good you have highlighted some of the sdgs and also you highlighted that our indian speaker will highlight whatever we have done in um india on sdgs thank you very much may i now invite um, mr winston roberts for for his opening remarks winston roberts is a chair of the asia oceania regional division committee of ifla and vice chair of ifla's regional council he works in the office of the national librarian at the national library of new zealand in uh, wellington advising on the library stakeholder relations with overseas pr organizations and international professional bodies 
he formerly worked for ifla in the ha uh, hague as a coordinator or of professional activities from 1990 to 19, 1998 he is particularly interested in issues of concerning digital information literacy public access to information protection of cultural heritage and freedom of expressions in his work for the library and information sector he provides iflas activities which support the process towards the un sustainable development goals in 2030 mr winston robert please thank you deval can you hear, can you all hear me yes yes good the connection is good thank you it's a long way from New Zealand to Delhi. <laughs> so sometimes I'm a bit suspicious about these connections. Anyway, hello from the South Pacific. I'm very glad to see so many people attending. I see on my screen the number of 77 participants. I think this is a credit to you, Debel, and the organizers of the event. Um, <clears throat> And I'm glad to see that you're all interested in IFLA and following our activities. And I'm particularly grateful to Dr. Kaudi uh, because the ILA, the Indian Library Association, has agreed to support this webinar of the South Asia Group of the Asia Oceania Regional Division Committee. Now, that's a very long mouthful of words and a very official sounding collection of names. What does it mean? Well, the Regional Division Committee of IFLA has divided its uh, group. We're, a, we're a, gr a committee of 20 people representing Asia Oceania. And we've divided our committee into sub-regions South Asia is just one, and the speakers in this webinar tonight represent the South Asia group. We also have a group for Northeast Asia, North Asia, which includes our colleagues from China, Japan, and uh, other countries. We don't have the Koreans in at the moment, but we might in the future. We also have a group for Southeast Asia, and we have colleagues on our committee from the Philippines, from Singapore, and from Indonesia. We have a group from the Pacific. That's our fourth sub-regional group. And the Pacific for us means uh, Micronesia, the Northern Pacific. It means Fiji, Samoa, and other smaller countries in the region. It also, of course, means New Zealand so and Australia because we are in the Pacific, although we're way down south and we're uh, in a different economic situation from some of the smaller islands in the Pacific. But our region is enormous. It covers the whole region, so to speak, from Iran in the west across to the middle of the Pacific to Samoa on the international date line. We're covering half the world. Now, that sounds like um, it could be a challenge, and it is a challenge to keep in touch with so many colleagues, all concerned with libraries in the Northern Hemisphere, Asian countries in the North, Asian and Pacific countries in the South. It is a challenge. And... <coughs> Excuse me. But we are grateful in, in doing our work. We are grateful to the policy people and the logistics support of IFLA headquarters. And also that is uh, the people represented here by Helen Mandel, our secretary general. And we're also grateful to the regional office in Singapore because you know IFLA has six regional divisions. We are just one of six and the three regional divisions in the south have a regional office. Ours is in Singapore. And they provide they put out a newsletter 
and they provide us with a lot of uh, insight into activities going on in our region, and they help us with communication to among members in our region. So this webinar is useful in the sense that it is dealing with a substantive issue of great concern to libraries. It's also useful because we are expecting our colleagues from South Asian countries to give us factual information. It's also useful because it gives us the opportunity to make contact with our colleagues in the region. Contact through the screen, if you like, but contact through a screen is the way that we have learned to do things in the last two or three years of the pandemic. And in such an enormous region, it is not possible for us to meet in person, face to face around a table very often. In fact, it has not been possible ever since the pandemic began and since our regional divisions were restructured two or three years ago. This is one of the first opportunities that we've had to meet you, our colleagues from South Asia. And unless you were at the IFLA Congress recently in, in uh, Ireland in July, and unless you were able to go to a recent meeting in Bangkok, then we have not actually had the opportunity to meet in person. So, you know, these Zoom meetings are very valuable. It's, it's, I find it uh, difficult, and I'm sure people find it difficult exchanges to our colleagues by simply exchanging emails and documents. It's so good to actually see people through the screen. This is, um, it's, it's, it's a sort of virtual reality, which is almost the main reality these days. More webinars for all our subgroups. And we uh, obviously uh, will do our best to get our, all our committee members to speak in all our webinars. And in particular, we want to see speakers from the national library associations in our regions and the individual libraries who are members of IFLA because we want to involve them. We, we don't just want to work as a, as a committee of 20. We want to bring in from time to time uh, representatives of library associations and institutions in our region they are the people, the institutions and associations who support the work of our committee. They give us ideas. They um, help us communicate ideas to their members, thousands of members across the library sector in all the countries of our region, 60 countries in Asia and Oceania. And I'm just talking here about the regional side of IFLA, but of course, let's not forget that IFLA has a large number of technical sections and other policy development units. That's what we call the professional side of IFLA, reporting to the professional council. IFLA has more than 50 technical units. And when you join IFLA, when you become a member as an association or an institution, you get involved in one of the, this large number of professional units. All of our IFLA members are active in some of those units according to their choice. But for the moment, I'm talking about the work of the regional division. One of the job of the regional division, all of the regional division committees, in fact, is to advocate for IFLA work, to advocate for IFLA as an international NGO, and to advocate for the interests of libraries in your countries as well across the region. And we work with, and we are charged by IFLA with not only advocating for the profession in the broad sense, but also specifically working with national partners, 
with regional partners and with international partners in the library sector. These may be in archives, in museums, they may be partners in the education and culture sectors in uh, countries of the region, and we hope your associations will work with their partners in those uh, parallel sectors also. And of course, we support the work of IFLA headquarters in engaging at international level with uh, partners who support our work. And one example of that was in fact, recently, I referred to a meeting we held recently in Bangkok, which was organized by IFLA headquarters. And Jibal uh, and I and some of the other speakers in this webinar were present at that meeting. And we worked there, we, we discussed uh, library issues there, information issues with some uh, experts from the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, UN ESCAP. That is an example of one of the things which we want to do more in the future, to get the idea of libraries activities across to those officials. <coughs> And of course, coming back to the sustainable development goals, which Helen Mandel has mentioned to us this evening, sorry, today, <laughs> and which Dr. Kade has also mentioned to us. One of our main responsibilities as a committee in this division is to encourage our members, that is, uh, your associations in your countries, to talk with their national authorities to explain to those authorities exactly how they should uh, explain to them that the libraries in their countries have a, an economic benefit and a social and cultural benefit which they should take account of when they are reporting to the United Nations on the activities of their countries um, reporting on the the contributions that they are making nationally towards on the slow progress maybe but the progress nevertheless which they are making towards achieving the sustainable development goals in their countries we we feel that it's essential that national authorities should understand the evidence that is, exists the strong evidence that libraries make an economic contribution to achieving the sustainable development goals. And we are organizing in, in the webinars that we organize in our division committee, we uh, focus particularly on some of the goals, number four, education, but also number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And number 17, partnerships for the goals. We believe that libraries, library associations in all countries in our region work in these areas and we want our national authorities to understand the evidence that they should then reflect in their reports to the United Nations. And our committee, what does our committee do? Our regional committee, it works on uh, uh, some projects to do with uh, awareness of resilience for libraries because we are a region which is uh, subject to natural disasters and climate change we have in our region we have small island developing states which are at risk of sinking into the sea over the next century we have countries with popul dense populations on uh, at low-lying areas uh, Bangladesh for example we have countries which are subject to tsunamis and earthquakes, thinking of Sri Lanka, but also uh, countries like my own, which is subject to earthquakes. We have many countries, large and small, in our region uh, at risk of, well, uh, at risk of natural disasters, obviously, but we have to uh, consider how we can protect the cultural heritage of our populations the heritage protect, preserved in our libraries. So we have uh, to work with national authorities on these matters. And also we are concerned with uh, initiatives on uh, human rights 
and the um, integration of um, library issues into the United Nations agenda for the internet, for example. Internet governance is important, but it's not just a technological issue. It's an issue uh, relating to human rights. It's an issue relating to access to information. All of these issues are important for us. And I think you will hear and see some of this evidence from the speakers in South Asia who are going to follow on in the rest of this webinar. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Winston Roberts, for your opening remarks and some issues of, uh, of South Asia and Oceania. Um, also, uh, SDGs and what we have done. And thank you very much. Uh, may I now uh, request uh, Dr. D.V. Singh for his talk on Indian libraries and SDGs. Dr. Dharambi Singh is uh, presently working as professor and librarian at SRM University. <coughs> he has served as university librarian in University of Delhi and Kurukshetra University and librarian at Sriram College of Commerce, Delhi University, MNIT Jaipur, and Arja PG College, Panipat. He was the president of Indian Language Association from 2010 to 13, and also served ILA, Indian Language as senior vice president and general secretary. He is a member of National Education Government of India since 2000, October 2011. He has published 19 research papers, authored seven books. He has translated IFLA public library guideline, guidelines and BLIS course materials of Indira Gandhi National Open University, Delhi, from English to Hindi. Um, May I now invite Dr. Divi Singh, please, for his talk. Divi Singh, please. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this good afternoon to all, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts. India has a big history and long history about the libraries. We had a big, big libraries in, in Taxila and Nalanda, which was set on fire by uh, Bhaktiar Khilji in 1200 B. See, it had 1 million uh, manuscripts uh, there, but it's a history now. At present, we have 1,072 universities and uh, we have 13,216 colleges and 1.5 million schools. Apart from that, we have 54,000 public libraries. But India is a very big country and it requires a lot of work to do and to go every nook and corner of the nation. India also conducted one survey in 2011 that is known as National Youth Leadership Survey. I think it is only in India took place, not in other Asian countries. But its findings are very much encouraging and eye-opening. Wherever reading habits are good, there is a line order is better and people are involved in better activities or other say productive activities. And the area which are disturbed and there's no, uh, what you can say, reading habits are low. There's a lot of hue and cry and other upwillings and etc. So to bring line order and to bring people into the mainstream and make them be contributing, we need a large scale, uh, you know, change in the library system. There's no proper census of Indian libraries in India. Some say it is 1.5 lakhs, you can say 150,000 one, uh, 150, libraries in India, but it's, there's no, somebody says it's a 0.5 million libraries in India. So it is a different issue. It requires a lot of work to be done. This is one thing. But the spread of the library is in the interest of the nation, in the interest of the society. For that matter, a committee was formed in 2004 uh, in Nepal, known as Rapsala. Regional Federation of South Asian 
library association and it took it took its meeting meeting to i think took place in bangladesh and last meeting which i attended it was in sri lanka and after that that body has almost defunct we should revive that body instead of it's okay it's a good effort from ipla i appreciate it and i feel it is very good but if we have the rapsala we revive it and we make the meetings and do the meetings and discuss we can give something to others and others can give something to india and be a india big country and better in position so it can take the lead but uh, ifla should take lead in this regard that rafsala regional federation of library south asian library association should be revived for the development and spread of the uh, library network india is literacy is increasing with leaps and bounds it is 77.7% as on today as per the government record but it is much higher than that the with the increase of the literacy in india and it is going to every nook and corner of the country so library requirement is not that much it is not 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 supplementing the requirement of the new literates for that matter we need the public library network and which should be at least in every village we have more than 0.6 million villages in india but every village i can say even out of 100 there is one library might be that is a personal library and for district libraries are there in india state libraries are there in india national library is there but on sub division level in haryana they have the libraries no problem with that and they have in some villages also sub division libraries are definitely there district libraries are there state libraries there it is in a very good shape and so is the case in kerala they have libraries there but in other states like punjab no i don't think is a good uh, situation in punjab availability of the literature is only possible relevant literature is only possible through the public library network school and college university libraries are meant for the school or college or university students and researchers but for the public purposes we need the public library and we should provide them the literature in the vernacular for that matter raja ramon rai foundation doing a good job but that is not a sufficient sufficient job for india to come up to the level so the more we have the network and that that effects and impact its impact effect and impact is always very positive and wherever you open the library people go to the library they meet with each other they they interact with each other and for the old people For, for you can say not the old you can say for the mature people those who have crossed the age of 60 they have more time on their uh, on their behalf and they can use it leisure time they have for leisure time they need the library and library can play the wonders this is the thing so one suggestion which i would like to give is that rapsala should be revived rapsala means regional federation of south asian library association it was there it worked for some time very nicely the meetings were held decision were taken and they were it should be revived once again asian okay fine whatever ipla is doing that so it was also part of ipla when last meeting took place in sri lanka ipla president was very much there it was the you know golden jubilee i think 50th years of the sri lankan library association and after that i have not heard anything about this association but we can revive it and we can think about it we can have more more meetings like this zoom meeting is very easy to interact and we can have it this rafsala people can have a meeting once in a month and can interact and discuss and can have the other the other instrument in in our hand is the technology which can exchange the documents from one country to other country very easily so that that coordination should be uh, should be you know taken uh, should take place and india should take lead into that so these are the certain suggestions which i want to make and india can make the you know they can take the lead we have uh, infrastructure we have mindset also and we have the uh, literate uh, population we can support it so we should take up this issue with if through ifla and directly ila also doing its own uh, very good job for the development of these things to the government of india and with these words i thank you all of you Okay, Devan, from my side. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. D. V. Singh, for your nice talk and uh, raise some of the issues, uh, mainly issues of public libraries, uh, issues of artisala and um, library literacy, census 
library sensors and reading habit. Thank you very much. Um, um, now our next speaker is uh, Mr. Arshad. Uh, is Mr. Arshad there? I am not seeing him. Arshad from Pakistan is not there, I think. He, I don't know. He told yesterday that he will be there, but still he is not there. Um, so then I am going for Bangladesh. Um, uh, may I now invite Muhammad Jamaluddin for his talk on Bangladesh libraries and SDGs. Uh, Muhammad Jamaluddin and Chief Bibliographer and Deputy Director of Department of Archives and Library, Dhaka, Bangladesh. And he received his uh, honors and master in information science and library management from University of Rajshahi, Bangladesh. He has completed six month course and international training program on education and training program from libraries in Asian Africa uh, in Suel, Korea. Uh, and also he has completed uh, intern, uh, certificate course on modern library practice from Chennai, India in ITS scholarship from government of India. He's also now a PhD research scholar from Bangladesh. And Jamal is a uh, training coordinator, ISBN supervisor uh, of the National Library of Bangladesh. He has considerable number of research works appearing in national and international journals. Uh, may I now invite uh, Muhammad Jamaluddin, please? Yes. And thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, greetings and good afternoon to all from Bangladesh. Uh, firstly, I would like to cordial thanks to organizing committee. And I would also sincerely thanks to Dr. Dilara Begum and Mr. Al Mamun for selecting me for sharing best practices of libraries and librarians in their support of the UNS disease in, on behalf of Bangladesh. Uh, Welcome to my presentation. Uh, can I share my presentation here or not? Yes, you can. But I don't know. Yes, you can share. Yeah, can you see? Yes, okay. Share, please. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, three public universities, eight private universities, eight colleges, and 20 LIS institute. Mm -hmm. And the national university are provided honors, master's, and PhD degree, and postgraduate degree. It is not shared. Oh, it, is, it, is, it is not shared. Okay, okay, okay. Try again. Okay. Yes, yes, your screen is shared. Whole screen. Yeah. Yeah, Whole yeah. screen is there. Yes. Okay. Yes, sure. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, we know uh, the main goals of focus of the five is people, the well being of all people, planet, protection of arts, ecosystem, prosperity, peace, and partnership. These five aspects are interdependent. The SDGs is demand integrated thinking as well as integrated approaches uh, they achieving the goals. Uh, we are seeing here 17 goals and 169 targets aimed at resolving the social, economic, and environmental problems traveling the world. Uh, now I will share the role, initiatives, activities, implementations, and challenges of Bangladesh LIS professional aspect. Uh, 
Uh, we need this disease because the flowing regions, property and suffering from hunger, natural disaster, water, scarcity, and gender inequality. So, if we meet this disease, the world will be improved. End poverty of hunger, combat inequalities within and between two countries, build peace, protect human rights, and promote gender equality, and ensure lasting protection of the planet and its natural essence. And finally, create conditions of sustainability. Facilitated of libraries in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, libraries now need to demonstrate that can accelerate change across the whole range of 2030 agenda. Everyone within and beyond the library community can help foster the role of libraries and development support. In the same way, libraries can access to information supports the flowing things. Eradication of poverty, agriculture, quality education, we know if we confirm or see the quality education that library is the best places for information and best data and quality data. Health, wellness, public access to ICT. Uh, now, uh, the years of ICT, everywhere ICT needs for communicate the data and information. So uh, we should uh, depend the library for ICT and other things. Culture, economic growth, and civil societies. But fourth, in October 2022, Information Science and Library Department of Dhaka University participate in the research publication fair as part of the UNS disease and its relevance to ISLM domain or open access information. The role of librarian. Here, librarians can role a vital can a vital role for rights information to the right citizens. Librarians develop relevant collections and facilitate access to resources. Librarians support access to government information. Even librarians support to the development of freedom of access legislation. Librarians model high standards of information ethics. The librarians work with the government and NGOs. So, even making national development plans, will shape many government spending and program priorities in Bangladesh. First priority is education plans. Secondly, ICT infrastructure plans. Thirdly, health and wellness plans. Fourth, library development plans. Uh, the priorities will be different in different countries and regions. Lab, library associations of Bangladesh and BELIT, Bangladesh Associations of Librarians, Information Scientists, and Documentations. Two associations, library associations in Bangladesh. And their mission and vision are almost same. The mission of library association of Bangladesh is to provide leadership for the development, promotion, and improvement of library information services and the provision of librarianship in order to enhance learning and ensure access to information for all. Bellit. Bellit also some objectives like modernize the services of library, improve the status of librarians, advancement of professional skill and profession, uphold professional interest and welfare to the members. Cooperate with different libraries, and information and documentation center. Even established an integrated national information system. They are working elevated literacy and contribute to improve the quality of education. In this regard, lab will taking the initiative to amend the designation and 
elimination to pay scale disparity of government college and madrasas librarian. They are also taking steps to provide health insurance and health card to live members of LIS professionals. I am also the live members of uh, library lab, library association of Bangladesh, but I am not the elected or selected member, but I am also together with them as a national library uh, professionals. To encourage by giving out to those who have good results of ILIS. Uh, this last month, lab uh, uh, giving awards uh, to, uh, to a student who is a good result from the National University of Bangladesh. This is their first initiative. Library and post create for primary school library. You know, Bangladesh have, haven't any library and post in primary school library, but they are initiated. Inclusion of library information science and BCS cadre services. It is also the uh, good news for Bangladesh. The, there is no cadre services uh, uh, library information subject, but they are trying to uh, inclusion of uh, library information science subject in BCS cadre. So BCS means Bangladesh civil service. Role of National Library, Public Library, and ISLM Department of Public and Private University. Increase awareness at all levels of society. Good practices for improving library system and services. National Library organizes a tender standing program on modern library management for library professionals in their capacity building. It is also free of cost, even we also provide them uh, uh, honorarium uh, for this training. Many workshops and seminars and conferences organized by Information Science and Library Management Department, especially East West University and Dhaka University. They are organizes literacy, uh, East West University uh, organizes literacy week, many workshops, and seminars that related to SDGs. They are also working open access to information for all professionals. Reading promotion organized by public library. They are organizing mobile library for root level readers to build reading habit. Except the above discussion library supports the goal. Six, number six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 by providing access to obtain quality, access to obtain quality information and best practices that support local water management and other activities. Number eight. The library support this goal by providing access to the skills training information everyone needs to find, apply, and get a better job. Number goals nine. Public libraries and what is special libraries and professional skilled librarians friendly and inclusive public access. Access to ICTs such as high-speed internet that may not be available elsewhere. Number 10, reduce the gap. The library supports this goal by providing friendly and natural spaces for learning that are open to everyone, including marginalized groups, such as immigrants, refugees, minorities, and social engagement. Number 11, The library support this goal by providing trusted institutions devoted to promoting cultural inclusion and understanding. The even a documentation and preservation of cultural heritage for future generations. 
number 12, 13, 14, and 15 by providing ongoing system for sharing and circulating materials, library materials that reduce past historical records, documentation on land use and coastal changes. Research results and data needed to information for climate change policy. Open access to information for local and national government decision making guidelines on things such as hunting, fishing, and land other water management. Library support this goal by providing the following information. Public access to information about government, civil society, and other institutions. Training in the skills needed to understand and use information. Number 17, a global network of community-based institutions preferably to support local and national development plans. Role of libraries in SDGs implementation. Libraries are essential platforms for achieving such objectives. E plus is a leading international body representing the interest of people who rely on libraries and information professionals. Access to information was recognized as a priority in SDG 16, ensuring public access to information and safeguarding fundamental freedoms in compliance with national legislation and international agreements. Cultural, climate, literacy, and ICTs have also been included in the SDGs. And universal literacy is recognized in the vision for UN 2030 agenda. Major challenges of Bangladesh. Infrastructural development, renewable affordable energy and its security, skill development, technology adoption, policy framework, and long-term strategies is the major challenges. Sourcing funds, allocation, explicit roadmap with a plan of action. But three, promoting inclusive and sustainable economic growth. It is also a number of challenges. Perspectives. Finally, I can say the sustainable development goals make the cooperation of new knowledge among countries, state institutions, and non-state actors a must. That indeed, for most countries, achieving the goals may well depend on it. The proposed universality of the SDGs underscores the reality that most countries acknowledge. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you, Jamaluddin, um, for your talk um, and some initiatives of Bangladesh on SDGs. Um, before going to the next speaker, I want to say that if you have any questions answer for the previous talk and from this talk, you can put in the question answer. Um, and then we will take in the last um, okay. at the end of this talk, all okay. the talk. Thank you so much. May I now invite uh, our next speaker, Dr. Premila Gamage, for her talk on Sri Lanka libraries and SDGs. Um, uh, Dr. Premila Gamage is a chartered librarian with the more than 35 libraries of 35 years of experience in university and research libraries. She holds PhD in information management from Leeds Metropolitan University, UK. And currently uh, she serves as a consultant of the knowledge management systems and the librarian of the uh, uh, variety research, Colombo, Sri Lanka. She's also the country coordinator, coordinator of the skills of work program and commonwealth of learning canada she's also the elected regional divisional division of asia and oceana member and she was elected to the governing board of ifla elected as the 
chairperson of the divisional regional activities Asia Oceana, Africa, Latin America, and Caribbean, and elected to regional standing committee of Asia Oceania Freedom of Expression and Free Access to Information Committee, Library Theory and Research Committee. And Dr. Premila is awarded the honorary fellowship of Chartered Institute of Library and Information Professional uh, UK. And may I now invite Premila, uh, Dr. Premila Gamage for her talk. Uh, uh, Jamal, can you, can you off your share sharing? Yes. Stop your screen sharing. Yes. Dr. Jamal, please. Yes. Yes, it, it is, is open. still it is still there. Stop screen sharing. You go to screen sharing, screen, share screen and stop it. Can you see? Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes, madam. Yeah, yes, okay. we can Thank see. you very much. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> and good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I will <clears throat> very briefly uh, present you the Sri Lanka Library Association's engagements, contribution towards achieving the SDGs, and also give some <clears throat> one or two examples from other libraries in Sri Lanka. Uh, how they contribute to the achievement of SDGs and also the way forward and challenges that we face. <clears throat> so to showcase and promote the role of libraries as supporters of development, Sri Lanka Library Association participate in and participated in uh, various national, regional, international forums. In December 2021, Sri Lanka Library Association approached the National Authority, the Sustainable Development Council of Sri Lanka, to discuss the possibility of establishing a partnership with them. It is the institute uh, responsible for coordination, facilitation, monitoring, evaluation, and reporting on the implementation of 2030 Agenda for sustainable development in Sri Lanka to the UN. At this initial meeting, we discussed the ways in which libraries are raising awareness of the SDGs and how they contribute to their success. Further, we discussed how we can contribute to Sri Lanka's voluntary national review, which the Secretary General mentioned very briefly. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, so at this meeting, SDC requested us to draw an action plan for the purpose based on the discussion held and the priorities stated in the national policy and strategy on sustainable development for Sri Lanka, sustainable development for a sustainably developed Sri Lanka the Library Association SDG Committee submitted the action plan 2022 to 2024. And after reviewing that and few discussions, the uh, is, a partnership was established and the official MOU was signed in last September. So actions in this plan covered 13 SDGs with the collaboration of all committees and professional groups of the SLLA, that is Education Committee, Public Library Committee, Special Library Committee, Academic Committee, Government Libraries Groups. So external partners include the National Library of Sri Lanka and Colombo Public Library. So, and after we draw the, uh, drew the uh, action plan and awareness workshop of the action plan was conducted for members of these groups and partners and asked them to uh, integrate these actions into their, their groups, their professional uh, sections, work plans. Uh, 
uh, encourages the library sector to support the SDGs, build the capacity of libraries to advocate for our values and goals at national and regional level, and also increase the resilience of the sector in facing economic pressures and climate events. So another series of workshops will be held from January 2023 to encourage the librarians to support the SDGs, build the capacity of libraries to advocate for our values and goals at national and regional level. So libraries are contributing and librarians are doing good work, but what we learn, the impact evaluation is lacking. This is what we learn and how we could uh, make them aware, uh, the librarians aware uh, at the very recent workshop that held, IFLA held at, held in Bangkok, uh, the two, at the two-day workshop, this was very clearly explained and the workshop gave us first-hand uh, experience. So we are planning to take, include this uh, also in our next awareness, series of awareness workshops. So, SLLA also had conducted a survey uh, <clears throat> to find out the awareness of SDGs among communities in the district of Colombo. So this survey will be extended to other districts in the country. So this will help us to facilitate and conduct awareness sessions to educate communities on sustainability and sustainable development, sustainable lifestyle. Uh, SLL is also now working on introducing sustainable development and SDGs into their education programs, that is Diploma in Library and Information Science, three-year diploma uh, course conducted in all three languages. And also some of the, we encourage other universities also to consider including this as a module in their curriculum. And I, we know already some of the National Institute of Library and Information Science has started introducing uh, sustainable development in their curriculum. <clears throat> so as a result of, result of SLLS advocacy, for the first time, librarians were mentioned in the National Voluntary Review of Sri Lanka. This is the second national review presented to the UN by the uh, SDC. <clears throat> so thanks to IFLA at the UN High Level Political Forum on uh, Sustainable Development, we had the, in July this year, we had the great opportunity to meet the national authority uh, participation ambassadors and also the uh, other countries in the region, uh, how they approach, how they advocate, how they contribute to their uh, achieving the SDGs. So that was a great opportunity. And we were able to further uh, make aware of uh, further our national representatives on how libraries contribute. And also uh, we <coughs> also uh, learn from them how we could contribute to their uh, VNR plans further. Uh, so now let me give a uh, few e examples of the libraries how they contribute to the uh, towards achieving the SDGs. As we all know, libraries are immensely contributing towards all the SDGs. So it is not different from Sri Lanka as well, but let me give you one or two specific projects, specific programs that conducted in libraries, specifically <clears throat> uh, or most prominently contribute towards the SDG, SDGs. So the <clears throat> Skills Online Sri Lanka is just one example how the uh, libraries responded to COVID-19 and supported SDGs. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, the National Library of Sri Lanka formed a partnership with Commonwealth of uh, Learning in Canada. Uh, Coursera workshop, Workforce Recovery Initiative with the aim of helping job seekers in Sri Lanka to gain skills and reskill uh, 
to enter into the job market. So this uh, learning platform offered more than 5,000 courses and we encourage uh, <coughs> selected uh, learners to follow courses uh, which are on blue economic, green economic, climate change, even their work modules, their work courses on SDG, sustainable development. So, <clears throat> so National Library also collaborated jointly with diverse local and organizations such as vocational training in authority, public libraries, educational institutions, especially work with disabled people, telecom organizations and employers. So this was very successful program. Uh, it produced more than 4,300 learners who earned 21,343 certificates from world-renowned universities and organizations. The program resulted in positive outcomes and it has helped unemployed to find jobs, secure jobs and improve livelihood. A wide range of courses that can tap requirement as well as the potential of learners have enabled the employed people to hone their skills for career advancements through promotions. Some of the skilled learners have set up small businesses, created avenues for self-employment to sustain their livelihood. We have many success stories from the learners. So nearly half of the learners enrolled into the program were females. This means the program also contributed towards gender equality, thereby strengthening the female participation in the workforce. So as a result of success of the outcomes, the Commonwealth of Learning extended their support till 2024, which included other learning platforms as well. An ongoing program has already produced nearly 1,000 learners. <clears throat> so now let me... <coughs> Uh, give another example from a public library. This is the program uh, started as a pilot program at the Colombo Public Library, uh, spoken English at the public library. The aim of this program was to give confidence to students uh, and youth who understand English but struggle to speak in English with confidence. So program was run by a volunteer and around 40 participants attended uh, the three month course. So this was actually held uh, <clears throat> under very difficult time uh, uh, as you, most of you are aware, we uh, the Sri Lanka undergoing a very bad time. And this program was ju started just about it, uh, but the, with all the uh, difficulties that they face, uh, uh, transport issues, power cards, they all the all selected uh, students and youth attended this uh, course with, with very uh, their enthusiasm was very well uh, displayed and uh, the, it was a very success and uh, there was overwhelming demand to continue. Uh, the program and extend it to many other age groups. So now we have started the second program with more vol volunteers and the program is extended to another public library uh, under the uh, another branch of the Colombo Public Library. So, <clears throat> There's another uh, program conducted by the Colombo Public Library. It's Empowering Women, women Ent Entrepreneurs. <clears throat> it is a joint program with <clears throat> the support of, uh, with the support of small in enterprise development under the, at that time, it, under the Ministry of uh, Economic Policy and Planning. This was started 
as uh, uh, in 2019 to celebrate the Women's Day, but, but they, since then it is continuously uh, going on. Uh, so they uh, bring uh, experts and give the skills uh, on various uh, various uh, 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 small industries like uh, making food, uh, making uh, handicrafts, things like that. And based on their interest, the uh, ministry, with the support of ministry, they were directed to for more in-depth <coughs> uh, training for the uh, relevant uh, organizations, for an example, industrial development board. Like, So some of these uh, participants, women who attended these workshops have already started small scale businesses. Some have produced desserts and they are, uh, they are uh, selling those at uh, supermarkets in Sri Lanka. Likewise, uh, it's an ongoing special program started aiming at uh, improving uh, women's skills and uplifting their uh, uh, livelihood. So there are some other programs directly contribute towards achieving the S uh, SDGs, but these I just pick up because of the limited time that we have, just two programs. And what are the challenges and uh, what we plan to do in the future? So unstable political economic situation in the country severely affect the uh, action plan activities. A change of institutional heads is another issue because interests change and even sometimes you have to begin the uh, start establishing the relationship uh, from the partnerships from the beginning. Interests change and they also have their own financial issues and power cuts, fuel shortages, interruption to public transportation are some examples. With all, however, with all these challenges, right now we are in par with the action plan activities. So none of the VNR presented uh, at the high level political forum held in uh, July, uh, none mentioned the libraries during their VNR presentations, although their, their reports have uh, referenced reports uh, include references to the libraries. So strengthen our partnership with the National Authority and seek the possibility of getting involved in the review process would be our great challenge as well as our opportunity to communicate further to the national authorities how libraries serve as cost-effective partners advancing their development priorities. This will be our challenge, most difficult challenge as well as the opportunity. With this I conclude and happy to uh, answer or clarify if you have anything at the end of the session. Thank you very much again for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, uh, Dr. Premila, for giving the uh, SDG situation in Sri Lanka and nicely describes uh, giving some with some examples. Um, Mm. Thank you very much. May I now invite uh, Ms. Reshma Dongal for her talk from Nepal. Reshma Dongal has been working in the library profession for 13 years. Library is her passion. She is currently working as a professional librarian in SARC Secretariat. She is General Secretary of the Nepal Library Association. She is engaged as a library trainer 
uh, of CTVT, and she has been recognized in the IFLA Wall of Fame. She has been awarded as Excellence Award in SARC 2019. She played a major role in making successful of building strong library association program affiliated with IFLA. Um, may I now invite Reshma Dongal, please go ahead. Namaste, I'm audible, sir. Yes, yes. Greetings to all. Namaste and thank you so much, the Acting Secretary General of IFA, Ms. Helen, Madam, and Dr. Winston Roberts, Chair of IFA, our RBC AO. And thank you so much, Devil Sir, for giving me an opportunity to put on the some reports uh, regarding the libraries of Nepal. So I'm going to start. Like uh, we uh, like this source is. Uh, I have been taking this course from the 15 library we have celebrated in Nepal. So we have come in the conclusion that we have 10 points declaration for the advocacy and promotion of public and community, community libraries in Nepal. The major objectives was to discuss the issues and identify the solution for the development and expansion of public and community libraries. I wanted to put some of the According to our Ministry of Education, we have like we have um, advocated, uh, we have declared ten points. I just totally I wanted to keep the points only. Uh, we have expressed our collective commitment to making efforts from our respective fields at both policy and implementation levels for the establishment, promotion, and development of public and community libraries in Nepal. Then after we we are committed to. Um, Organize International Book Day, National Library Day, and a library conference every year, and for the development and promotion of public and community libraries at the provincial and local level. And we express our shared commitment for strengthening institutional structure, in enhancing the institutional capacity, creating a network for promoting and expansion of both public and community library in our Nepal. And then after we have uh, three levels of government to establish a library act, which is essential for the library public library at every local level. At the federal, provincial, and local levels, we will try to operate libraries and build new ones where known for presently exist. And we request our stakeholders, federal, provincial, and local government for the necessary budget along uh, with the coordination and uh, support of institutional development, the public and community library here. So in the high level constitutions, uh, like federal provincial level, we are trying to build up public and community library. And uh, like we're happy uh, to share that we have been success to, uh, to do the survey uh, with, um, uh, with the support of NBC of Japan. Santi Volunteer Association and with these organizations, we are uh, we are jointly working with association. We have done a uh, survey uh, for the public and community libraries uh, here in Nepal. And so, um, on the children's library, uh, we focus in children's sections. Uh, how to build up children libraries, how to maintain uh, and, and make the access for the children in the um, like in the grassroots levels also we are uh, like trying, we are doing the work on this. And we express our com commitments for building desirable, friendly, trying friendly, earthquake residents, uh, environment friendly, video friendly, and information technology friendly. Uh, we are all doing this uh, this in the Nepal. We are like we are in the development phase. And um, uh, other is like uh, here we community libraries and public libraries are related to the activities. We are like it's very significant. We have significant role on this. And um, we have been strong libraries here, and we have done uh, some conference uh, from the IFLA, like last time from in the Nepal Library Association, building a 
library association with a uh, conference on this and one of the our resource person was uh, our Dr. Pramila Madam uh, from Sri Lanka and we had a very good uh, uh, capacity building trainings on this thing as has on with the uh, support of EFLA, uh, Needless Advance, and we're very happy to get the, the new skills um, regarding the building the libraries. And uh, we like uh, community and public library, we have built this. Yeah, we have all. Uh, like oh, um, so now we have we have already uh, like in the end of the decision like now our next life is going to build and like uh, all the ministry of education is providing some resources some supports for every uh, like the uh, And we have uh, like uh, in a uh, many uh, types, uh, like for public community, national libraries, all these are emphasized in the Nepal. But still, we are uh, we are giving some strong results, but uh, somehow we are taking the uh, contribution from uh, our uh, uh, other countries, like San Santi. Association and we have, uh, according to our this report, we have like three objectives explore the status of public or community libraries in Nepal, assess the impact of public and community libraries on people's uh, existing policies and plans. We have all together 27 libraries uh, throughout uh, 69 districts and displayed the pictures of number of the library surveyed here. Survey. And we have uh, 84 percent of libraries. We have registered libraries here in Nepal. We have 84 percent, and like 73.3 percent were registered among the uh, district uh, administrative office here, and 70 percent of like surveyed libraries considered uh, the community libraries. Whereas uh, 30 percent of the libraries considered themselves as a public library here. And we have uh, average books uh, here in Nepal. Three thousand three thousand six hundred twenty-seven. Still, we are um, um, facing some uh, human resource uh, development and some we have challenges for the libraries uh, like funding and then after lack of uh, IT skills, computer skills, then after also lack of depository, depository of uh, public and community library acts and also um, some uh, lack of over awareness of government officials also now we have we are like building the, some uh, leadership capacity here in the ministry level so we are um, we are on like uh, due to, with the policies and these all acts we uh, like library acts it's all legislation it's been like done and other yeah we uh, also talking about the SDGs educations we have um, um according to our uh, nepal library association you know, members we have like 100 69 uh, uh, professionals uh, here working and 29, uh, sorry, 21 uh, professionals library we are, like generated from the university. We have uh, 880 para professionals and like it is stated that 355 professionals library according to our report and 48% yeah, of graduate library professionals are working. Uh, whereas 52% uh, of library professionals are topless and also retired and uh, some are resigned, some has been expired. And in 22 years, the, our central library, uh, library of information science, our department have 355 professors, which is you know, not enough to, 
uh, meet the demands of our country. Now, uh, we have some uh, trainings also for the capacity building uh, from CTVT and also Limistake. We have some organizations who uh, develop uh, some paraprofessionals, uh, librarians, and they are working in the different sectors. Like, uh, and also, like, uh, they have uh, human resource. So we have been uh, lacking for like uh, how to build the access of the human resource in a library sector we have more demand here in the uh, every uh, like uh, in the government sections in the education sections in every section but the criteria of like we have um, only the uh, central Trivial university central library which built of the professional library like we have uh, only that two university and like other university, like Tahun University, are there other universities, but we are uh, lacking for the professional, uh, like uh, getting the pro librarians here, generate the librarians, give part of the professional librarians. But uh, like, uh, I also agree with the, our um, uh, speaker from the India, uh, Sir um, Devi Singh, like uh, he was sorry, saying about the Red Sala. Uh, yes, uh, sir, I must agree with you. And uh, as a librarian of the South Secretary, uh, South Secretary, like South Asian Regional Centers, uh, this Dev Sala is very much uh, important and uh, for uh, like um, capacity building for the South countries librarians. And this, uh, and also <clears throat> some activities we can do uh, really uh, like jointly with the IFLA and Dev Sala. And this all we can uh, do process on this. So. I'm very much uh, 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 agree with the uh, like revive of the this sala, and like in the Nepal, uh, we are in the process of developing uh, in the in this profession. So uh, digital inclusion rules uh, here in the Nepal. We are doing process. We are doing process, and we have already completed one of the survey here and we have generated the report which was presented in the conference last time um, and uh, in the 15 library day this report was published but according to this source i am giving my uh, like regards uh, and giving my like uh, um, saying uh, our uh, reports of the nepa of the libraries and librarians here so we are in the process of giving the um, trainings uh, more than like webinars, also we are doing for the build up of the like ICT is much important. Uh, digital inclusion is much important for the development of the libraries and the librarians. So we are on focusing on this all. And uh, thank you for like uh, giving me the opportunity, uh, Devil sir. And uh, if any questions, I'll I'm more happy to uh, see. You. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Reshma, uh, uh, for your talk about the Nepal libraries and some initiative of SDGs. May I now invite Ms. Sonam Yagden for her talk from Bhutan. Sonam works as chief librarian for the National Library of Archives under the Department of Culture, Ministry of Home and Cultural Affairs in Bhutan. She has been working with the National Library since 2011, and she looks after the foreign language section of the National Library. Today, she will briefly present the uh, overall status of the libraries in Bhutan. May I invite Sonom Yagden for please? Uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Can I have the permission to share my screen, please? Uh, uh, thank you, everybody. It is a, a big uh, pleasure for me to present uh, in front of everybody and my greetings to uh, Helen and Dr. Winston and Dr. Uh, 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 Primila and uh, Dr. Deval and everybody and all of my colleagues. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, uh, to begin with uh, the National Library and Archives of Bhutan, uh, strives to maintain and develop our collections, uh, to provide services as a public reference library, and to promote libraries in Bhutan in general. And uh, uh, the National Library has been carrying out uh, advocacy and awareness programs on libraries and its services. Uh, 
However, uh, formally, uh, we have not uh, linked or connected our activities and programs to the UN SDG goals uh, directly. But uh, I believe that uh, uh, although we have not linked or connected, I believe that we have uh, always been working towards uh, in achieving the SDG goals. And uh, uh, during uh, the IFLA Asia and Ocean Region Workshop and the UN Seminar on Mobilizing Libraries in Asia Pacific uh, to support UN goals last month in Bangkok uh, proved to be very uh, to prove to be a very good learning and eye-opening experience for me and um, at least uh, my colleagues at the National Library uh, and I have uh, come to a realization that we are uh, to uh, align and connect our uh, plans and programs to the uh, to support the UN goals <clears throat> and uh, the. Uh, to this and uh, the National Library and Archives of Bhutan would like to affirm and pledge ourselves to align and connect our activities and programs uh, in support of the UN SDG goals from now on and from hereafter. So this is all I have to present uh, and I'll answer if there's uh, any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sonam. Uh, for your uh, talks and still we don't have, uh, I think we don't have uh, Muhammad Ashrad. I couldn't connect, connect, I tried to connect him, but he's not there. So may I now in, uh, request Pobin Baba to take a picture of all. Before start the question answer, Robin. I request uh, everyone to open the cameras so that we can take a, have a picture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions answer, you can uh, put in the box. Uh, as of now, I have seen one question. Uh, what are the steps taken to give increased awareness at all levels? Few example, please. So that's the only questions I have seen from the chart box, but in the question, I didn't see anything. So anybody used to answer to these questions? What are the steps taken to give increased awareness at all levels? Few example, please, that questions make by Um, I can give uh, Sri Lankan uh, situation. Uh, what we have done initially, we had the uh, awareness. Uh, we we had, council had a discussion, and then we formed the uh, within the SLLA SDG committee, uh, which is responsible for coordinating and taking these activities, which I am the convener. Then thereafter, we had uh, a session for uh, all the <coughs> uh, groups in the committee. And then uh, we ha have the action plan. And after the ex action plan, we have an, another awareness program uh, for the same partners. Thereafter, we have conducted uh, one awareness program for the librarians. Uh, at a large. Our plan is it is going to be like cascade training. Uh, we are going to have be trained on based on the action plan. Uh, we train the SLLA responsible group members and they, the groups take this the same training. We produce materials mostly based on IFLA materials and then they take it to their respective uh, regions and uh, districts and uh, towns. 
So that is one aspect. That is for the librarians. Then we also conduct uh, a series of workshops uh, for uh, communities. That is why to identify their, uh, to understand what the community understand by SDGs or do they have any understanding at all? We have already conducted a survey and right now we are at the very end of analyzing those data and we are conducting the same uh, survey, extend, we are extending the same survey to other parts of the country. And based on these findings, we conduct uh, the uh, awareness program for communities as well. And for an example, our SLA school library committee, they are taking care of school libraries, uh, the students, uh, public libraries also conduct, uh, take care of students as well as other communities. Uh, that is one aspect, uh, one of the uh, programs that we are planning to raise awareness. Thank you. Uh, I hope I, I answered like, the question. That I is. I would like to respond to this also. Uh, in India, Haryana government has it man made it mandatory there should be a library in every school. If there is no library in the school, the school will not get the approval or recognition from the government. This is on the instance of the Haryana Library Association. They took it to the government like anything and no library will be without the library and the, the process is going on. This is one achievement on ad administratively. A new education policy, which is known as national education policy, though it has brought such a curriculum and the structure of the education, no one will be able to complete his or her degree without going to the lab. If someone goes to the lab in the university or in the school or the college, he and she always try to find out a library in community also. The community pressure, the demand from the youth will definitely create this space for the public library and public library in India is not in a very bad shape but it's not in a very good shape as we expect for. Our expectation is there. Because we have 28 states and at eight union territory, every state and union territory has got its state library. And in Haryana is a very good situation. In Kerala it is a very good situation. In Maharashtra also it is far better than other places. This is one thing. The other thing is this, that uh, the literature related to the local people is very important. If we provide the literature, something else, but India is an agriculture country. It's based on agriculture. So literature related to the agriculture of that region, if it is in South, South pro, uh, crops are different, in North crops are different. So related to that and animal husbandry and all that, that literature can help to develop and invite the readers from the old segment of the society. This is one of the things. New education policy will definitely bring the change. It will revolutionize the Indian system. You look into the uh, into the, the, the structure of that education policy. It is mandatory for everyone to go to the library directly or indirectly. This is one of the development has taken place in India. Thank you, uh, Dr. D.V. Singh um, for bringing out these issues. And it's... Uh, uh, next uh, attendee, anonymous attendee, what steps and initiatives have taken to connect, network all the public libraries of the country? But she is not, I don't know from which country she is mentioning and who is that. So that already, I think, is replied some of the questions. So I am going to the next is Labiba Jain from Indonesia. How do you coordinate activities and programs relating to SDGs at national level? Do you have a roadmap at national relating to SDGs? How do we distribute the activities into a local levels? Is anyone to to these questions? Uh, I think I can. I would just. Um, speak on this and maybe Winston as well. I think we've heard a lot of really good examples from Sri Lanka and from Pramila. And this is a long journey. It's not something that happens overnight. 
And it's important that the National Association, the Library Association, also, or the National Library, if that's the leading group in the country, as uh, Sonam from, from Bhutan said, start to align themselves with the SDGs and believe it's important. And then you start to make sure that the people in your association are aware of what it means. Go down to, uh, you know, the next level of making people aware of what, what it means. And it's not necessarily about coordinating activities because every activity is, should be based on what that community needs. And that means if it's a public library in a community full of refugees, activities at that level should be aimed at helping that particular group. If it's a university with students who need, you know, ICT and different things so that they can complete their studies well because they don't have these facilities at home. That is also about being able to offer those kinds of services or, or activities that increase their ability because this is also about the citizens of the future. Similarly for school, school, school children. So it's about identifying the need and then being able to say, implement a, a particular activity and to then say, what impact did it make on individuals' lives? So the women that Pramila spoke about who did an entrepreneurship course and started a small business, the impact is perhaps now that they can afford to pay their children's school fees or that they can look after they you know they can put a roof on their house or something like this and this is this impacting lives that's important but it will be small actions everywhere that build this big big hole and contribute to a big hole but people need to be aware of this and then take it on and i just want to say that ifla has enormous amounts of material on its website that you can access and use, and in some case will give you guidelines as to how to move forward. So I'll stop there. I like to add something. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the question was how, whether the, there is a roadmap or how you have aligned the uh, activity, the, things. So as I mentioned in my presentation, we developed this action plan based on the uh, national uh, policy and strategy on sustainable development for sustainability development Sri Lanka. They have identified out of 17 goals, uh, around 15. So based on that, that is the uh, requirement of the uh, SDC, National Authority, who is reporting, body, uh, reporting the um, progress to the UN. And also, uh, based on that, we develop the activities. But at the same time, we, are, we have uh, to, I, as uh, Helen Mandel very correctly mentioned, identify the need. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It, the, the purpose is not going to be served. So we create, uh, uh, conducted a survey for the communities and National Library conducted a survey to understand the awareness of SDGs among librarians. So National Library is part of the SLA list, the whole program. So that is uh, based on that and also the requirements and needs of the uh, SDC, we plan our activities. And what we learned, I fully agree with the Songnam, the measuring impact evaluation. Librarians are doing all these uh, activities contribute towards the achieving of this, but that part is lacking. That is what we are planning to uh, in line with awareness as well as capacity building. So that workshop was very helpful. And I, I like to, uh, I think I mentioned this during the workshop, 
it is good to have a set of uh, uh, set of learning materials contents like we had for BSLA and uh, train the trainers program conducted by IFLA and their their after we can take in uh, translate and take into our own countries and uh, that will be very helpful for us uh, thank you very much unshtan uh, please thank you dubal i would like to I, i'm looking at the comment in the q and a um, section a comment from labiba zain from indonesia um who is another member of our regional division committee thank you labiba for your question um that question is enormous and it would take hours and hours to really answer it properly but i think the first way i would answer it is by saying look into uh, each goal below the top level line and look at the um the subsections and look at the indicators because the indicators uh will indicate to you how your association or your institution can actually make specific uh you know apply the its activities to these specific activities of the goals um you can't necessarily uh work it's not necessarily possible or necessary for each association and institution to work to all 17 goals you would have uh, a huge amount of work on your hands you could maybe select some of the most appropriate ones or make a selection of an indicators from particular goals and apply those to your own strategic planning activities in in your own um local area in your own institution your own association uh or you could say another option is to say to your association contact your government departments who are doing their uh sdg planning for example if you have the ministry of education which is working on SD, on goal 4 if you have a ministry for economic planning or a, a ministry for ict for communication technologies look at those ministries contact them and ask them what sort of planning they are doing and ask how you can link in with that planning if there is a road map at national level there is obviously an authority or an, or some brain behind the development of that road map road map and you could leave it to the national authorities or the regional authorities or you could take it down to a uh, local level talk to your government authorities at city or town level and explain to them at their lower level how the libraries can fit in with that uh, plan and support that plan but one final point i have also seen looking at following various ifla webinars i have seen a very interesting one uh distribute uh, a very interesting webinar um organized by uh, a library uh, academic libraries uh, section of ifla and there were two speakers from australia and they explained how their university had followed um some of the ideas in the sdgs purely for purposes of um what you might call intellectual training and intellect forming an intellectual approach to their own strategic planning their own activities and taking some of the ideas in the sdgs and applying those at a much more specific level lower down so it seems that the sdgs can actually act as a framework for thinking about all our, all of our activities as a, as a as a sort of mental framework which is not necessarily how they were intended to be used by the united nations but they are actually usable in that way many people have discovered that thank you miss reshma please thank you so much thank you so much sir uh, for the uh, like and loving hi in from my friend from indonesia thank you for the question like most of the queries were clear by 
our western sir and uh, Pramila madam. Like well, from in case of Nepal, just I wanted to make a point, Mati. Like uh, we have the motto one local level one library. So we are in the process of uh, making the local and professional association here. And also we have been already campaigned for the adopted of the libraries in the each ward and municipality here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, could I say something, Dabal? Yes, please. Uh, my only very short uh, request to the acting secretary general, Ifla and the Robert, kindly revive this Rapsala. It can play the big role and wonders in this region. And it's not a very expensive venture also. The all countries are very near to each other and can meet, meet once in a year. And all the state uh, means uh, country associations should coordinate and I think ILS should take lead in this. For that matter, I request the IFLA people that please coordinate or assign this job to somebody who can coordinate and can take the lead. Because when it was active, it played many good, good roles. I know that at that time I was the general secretary but president used to participate. So this is my humble request. This is one. Two is this, India has, you know, Ministry of Information, ICT it is there and another goal also set by the, uh, we can say, Niti Ayo, which is the another name of the planning commission. It is very much in their agenda. But we have to, in democracy, one thing is very important that you have to pursue with firmness and politeness. Be firm on your issue, be polite in your language and approach. That thing will bring the change. This is my considered opinion in democracy because you cannot direct in democracy, but you can persuade in democracy and things will come out in a very positive manner. This is all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Divi Singh Ji. Um, so we don't have any other questions, so we'll proceed further. Thank you, everybody. Uh, may I now invite uh, Dr. Mohan and Kare, President of Indian Library Association, to wrap up the program. Mr. Kare, please. Dr. Kare, please. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, in this particular webinar, uh, Dr. Viston and Ms. Helen Mendel have given opening remark and high experts from India, then Bangladesh, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Nepal. They have given very nice presentation on that SDG. So far as Dr. Divi Singh there, he has mentioned about reading habit and so far, literacy is there in India, it is day by day increasing. Yes, that is also he has mentioned. And he also mentioned that network of public library should become very strong. Yes, in India, it is there. But in some cases, still chances are there that so that that can be made more strong. He has mentioned that rerun literature should be there in the library. That is one thing. Again and again, he has mentioned that recently he has just requested IFLA people to revise the Repa Sala, that association, because it is very much important. Because when <clears throat> Uh, neighboring countries meet once in a year. We can do very nicely. And yes, rightly, ILA will take care. I will take lead for that. So I am also requesting if I will to go for that and revise that uh, committee. Then from Bangladesh, Muhammad Jamaluddin. He has also just given some reason why we need SDG. He has focused the role of librarians in the context of SDG. What initiative has been taken by Ballad, that is 
I think Bangladesh Association Library and uh, Information Documentaries. And he also mentioned that how we can support SDG. I mean, that things he has made very nicely in his presentation. Dr. Pramila, Madam, you are really yours nicely presented the things because you you have mentioned two two activities means one is spoken english and second is empowermenting of the women means while contributing is sdg what activity we should perform through our associations that you have mentioned very correctly. Now, while doing that activities, naturally some challenges are there. You have also mentioned that challenges. That challenges means unhealthy socio-political economic situation and fund, funding. These activities means the challenges are there. Uh, Ms. Reshma Dongal from Nepal. She also focused about the challenges. Yes, challenges are there. And she has nicely mentioned the challenges. And also the focus of the situation in the Nepal. She has uh, mentioned it. Now, when we are talking about all this thing, now SDG perform, means what are SDGs are there? We have to contribute something jointly instead separately. We can do jointly very well. We can achieve these activities through SDG. That is thing. Now, my humble request is that we must concentrate on local level. What are the needs of at local level? Yes, how being a librarian we can contribute by just seeing the need of local levels that we have to see <clears throat> and one thing is that only one thing that every public library should be act as a information centers whatever may be there what are the schemes because government publish some schemes but india india is big country it is not possible to reach these schemes up to the end users. Yes. So we must take care in public library. I am coming there. Therefore, public library should act as info centers. That things are there. Again, I am saying that it is a joint venture. Individual person cannot achieve these LDGs. So being a library associations, we should come at one platform and try to achieve the 17 goals because in each and every goal we can give our performance we can give our contribution so thank you very much thank you devil car for organizing such kind of things on behalf of ila i thanks all the experts all the panelists and to all IPA people. In future also, we can organize jointly such kind of webinar, or again, we can say physically also, we can uh, meet and we can discuss on that part. So once again, I'm saying that, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mohan Thade for your uh, wrap up comments. Um, may I now invite uh, Dr. Pardon? May I now invite Dr. O. N. Chobe, General Secretary of the Indian Library Association, to propose vote of thanks. Dr. O. N. Chobe, presently working as Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts, Ministry of Culture, Government of India. And uh, 
uh, he has 23 years of professional experience, published more than 30 articles, edited 13 books. He is presently General Secretary of Indian Library Association, was, and he was also Senior Vice President and Executive Member of the ILA. And he is also a Standing Committee Member of IFLA on Government Information and Official Publication Sections. May I invite Dr. Owen Chobe? for vote of thanks, ONG. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Devalkar. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my proud privilege to propose vote of thanks on the occasion of ILA IFLA South Asian Libraries and UN Sustainable Development Goal webinar. On behalf of Indian Library Association and on my own behalf at the outset, I would like to express my profound gratitude to IFLA in general and Asia Oceana Division in particular for collaborating this webinar with ILA. I wish to express my sincere thanks to the IFLA Acting General Secretary, uh, Secretary General Helen Mandel for her gracious presence. Thank you, Madam, for accepting our invitation for this webinar and share your valuable time in spite of your busy schedule. Thank you. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to respected Winston Robert, Chair of IFLA Regional Division Committee for Asia Oceania, for your kind presence on screen throughout the program, sir, and your thought provoking remarks. He has very old association with India since IFLA 1992 conference at Delhi. So thank you, sir. Thank you. I extend a very hearty thanks to Professor D.B. Singh, Librarian SRM University, former librarian and head Delhi University Library System, and former president of Indian Library Association for his excellent presentation about status of libraries in India. As per your suggestion, and Reshma from Nepal, ILA will try your best to revive the Rapsala sir. Thank you, Dr. D.B. Singh. I wish to express my thanks to Muhammad Jamaluddin, Chief Bibliographer <laughs> and Deputy Director, National Library of Bangladesh, Department of Archive and Library, from his stimulating presentation about Bangladesh library system. Further, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Premila Garme, IFLA RDC AO member for share your valuable experience and detailed data of Sri Lankan libraries. Thank you, Premila Ji. Thank you. Further, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Reshma Dangol, Librarian SARC Secretariat and General Secretary of Nepal, Nepal Library Association for accepting or present an invitation to present the report of Nepal libraries. I am very thankful to Sonam Yangden for, of National Library and Archive Department of Culture, Bhutan, for sharing your thought about libraries condition in Bhutan. My special thanks goes to Dr. Devalkar, Librarian, Kalgotia University, Noida, India, and Vice Chairman of IFLA RDCAO for conceptualizing this webinar and play a big role as a coordinator for this webinar. Thank you, Deval Dadaji. Thank you. I take this opportunity as a privilege to thank the President of Indian Library Association, Dr. Mohan Khede, for giving me a free hand to organize this webinar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Further, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all of his bearer of Indian Library Association. Indeed, ILA is very thankful to each member of Asia and Oceania Division of IFLA. I also express my thanks to Dilara Begum and Al Mumuin. My thanks are also due to Parveen Babbar for academic and technical support. Last but not least, I would like to acknowledge my sincere thanks to all LIS professionals from India and abroad for, uh, who joined across the globe and actively participated in this webinar. 
once again thanks to one and all thank you thank you so much thank you uh, thanks thank you everybody um it's nice webinar and thank you uh, winston roberts for giving uh, me the opportunity to organize these things along with uh, indian library associations I really thank you, Indian Library Associations, for they are actively participating in this and allow us to um, associate with them. Um, thank you, um, all the uh, uh, Indian Library Association um, officials, and uh, mainly Owen Choveji and Dr. Uh, Mohan Khadeji for their support and for their presence here. I also thank all the um, speakers, um, Dr. D.B. Singh, Dr. Uh, Jamaluddin, uh, uh, Ms. Sonam, Ms. Uh, uh, Reshma, um, uh, Dr. Premila Ji. Um, thank you, everybody. I thanks uh, uh, IFLA Secretary General Helen Men Mendel for, for her presence. I also thank you, Dr. Winston Roberts. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dilara and Premila and Mamun for your support all the way, being a working group committee of the South Asian region. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks, all the participants for being oh, here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, if you permit, so we can end the session. And we have recorded. If you want, I will place this in the uh, website. Anybody can want to see. They can see. Please this. provide to IL also, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Namaskar Namaskar from Namaskar from IL and India. Thank you. Namaste to all. Namaste to all.